Coming up on Hands On Mac, let's take a look at what each of the iPhone's reset options actually mean. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands On Mac. I am Micah Sargent. And today I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at resetting your device, resetting your iPhone and what that actually means. Because when you're resetting your iPhone, you actually have a few options. And so it would be a good idea to go over them. So let's head over to the iPhone and take a look. All right. First and foremost, you're going to want to launch the settings app and you may be familiar with this. You tap on general and you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will see an option that says transfer or reset iPhone. Now, Apple has essentially made this process a little bit easier because people often will, you know, move on to a new iPhone. They may, uh, they may give it to someone else. They may send it back. Uh, they may need to send it in for servicing and all of these different options will have different ways, uh, that you have to kind of go about resetting the device. So when it comes to uh, the transfer or reset iPhone setting within the settings app, you'll notice that up at the top, there's a get started option. We're not going to be talking about that today because that is the process that you need to do to make sure that you can transfer your device to you, basically everything that's on your device to a new phone. In this case, what we want to do is go down to the bottom and look at the two options there. On the bottom of the settings, there is a reset button and there is an erase all content and settings button. When we talk about the erase all content and settings button, this is simply the option to completely remove all of your traces on the device and completely uh, remove all of the settings and basically take your phone back to factory standard. So this takes off all of your photos, all of your contacts, all of your messages. It essentially just completely wipes the phone as well as the custom settings that you've added to the phone over time. So this is the nuclear option as it were. Uh, if you press this button, it's going to completely wipe your phone, but you also notice there's a reset button. And when you tap on the reset button, it offers you some options. You'll see reset all settings, reset network settings, delete all eSIMs, reset keyboard dictionary, reset home screen layout, and reset location and privacy. These are the options that I want to tell you about. We'll start at the top with reset all settings. This is kind of like hitting erase all content and settings, but in this case, it's going to skip that first part, the all content part. This is how you completely erase the customizations that you've made to your phone without removing any of your content from the phone. So your photos will still be there. Your All of your personal data is going to be there. In this case, it's just going to remove all of the sound settings that you might have set up, including ringtones, notifications. Uh, maybe for some people, you have specific notifications set up. Uh, the display settings, the brightness values, uh, if you have chosen a specific wallpaper, all of that will be reset to factory standard. Your network settings, your cellular and Wi-Fi settings, and then any other kind of customized settings that you've done. So essentially here, what you're doing is you are factory resetting the settings portion of your iPhone. That is what erase all or reset all settings does. Now, the next option is called reset network settings. And for those of you who have ever had trouble uh, connecting to the internet before, or maybe had trouble uh, with an eSIM or anything involving connecting two devices, maybe even Bluetooth, you may have been instructed to go to this setting. When you choose reset network settings, it resets Wi-Fi networks and passwords on the device. It resets your cellular settings and it resets any VPN or APN settings that you have on your device, except for those that are installed with a configuration profile. If you don't know what a configuration profile is, in this case, you don't need to worry about it. And if you have downloaded an app to your phone that's a VPN and chose to reset network settings, that VPN is going to be gone. It's typically a configuration profile is going to be used if you don't own the device and it's owned by, say, the company that you work for. Uh, a configuration profile may have installed VPN and this will not erase that VPN. But 
this is a really easy way to make sure that if you have a bunch of old Wi-Fi networks that are still part of kind of your account, and as you've upgraded to new phones, they're still there, and you don't want to go through and remove all of them piece by piece, this can help you with that. This will kind of wipe your phone of those Wi-Fi networks. It does remove the passwords, and if you are logged into iCloud, then it will sync across devices. So you will need to log in again, type in the password again for the network that you actually want to keep, but all the rest of them will go away. It also resets those cellular settings. So that means it's not going to completely wipe away your cellular settings. You'll still have your SIM or eSIM, but it kind of starts over, starts fresh with that information. And so if you are having cellular connectivity issues and the standard methods uh, of, of dealing with it aren't working, this may be a way to handle that. The next option is delete all eSIMs. And as you might imagine, what that does is it removes any eSIMs that are installed on your device. So tapping that button will go ahead and say, I don't want the eSIMs that I have installed. Please remove those. I want to kind of start fresh. Be very careful with that option because if you aren't able to reinstall the eSIM that is part of your specific uh, iPhone and you know cellular carrier account, then you've got an issue. The next option is called Reset Keyboard Dictionary. Now, when you choose this option, what it does is it actually removes uh, any custom changes that you've made to the keyboard dictionary. So for example, maybe you have placed some custom words or some text replacements into the, uh, your specific dictionary. So this could be like on, on most phones, on most iPhones, if you type in OMW, then it will uh, go ahead and autocorrect that to on my way exclamation point. That is a text replacement. You uh, That one's set up by default, but you can go in and create your own in the keyboard settings. Uh, and then over time, as you're using your device, the keyboard starts to learn a bit about how you specifically type. And so if you constantly are changing a, a keyboard or rather a, an autocorrect to something else, that's part of your personal dictionary. If you ever want to kind of say, look, I don't like how this is working. I feel like I've made this change and now I realize I don't want it to. I want it to go ahead and autocorrect as it should. This is a great way to reset that, kind of start over and build out your new personal dictionary from there. The next option I really love, it's called Reset Home Screen Layout. With Reset Home Screen Layout, what it does is that it will go to your home screen layout and it will remove any folders that you've created. They'll all be gone. And then any apps that you've downloaded will be placed alphabetically after the default apps that come with your iPhone. So when you've ever got a new phone, if you did, if it's, it was fresh to you, if you got a new iPhone and you've never had one before, then you probably started fresh, right? You launched the device, you saw the home screen and you saw messages and phone and all of those basic apps. That is what it would look like. And then the rest of your apps would be arranged alphabetically after those basic default iPhone apps. It's a really cool feature if you kind of want to start fresh and reset your home screen layout to, again, what Apple uh, sees as the default so that you can then make those changes from there. And then the last option that you have is an option called reset location and privacy. Um, as you get more apps on your device and as you launch, you may remember that many of them will prompt and say, can I have your location? And you can choose if it's a specific location, if it's a more broad location, you can say, while I'm using the app, you can have my location or you can always have my location. All of those you've probably come across. And you can go into settings, privacy and security and location services and scroll through all of your apps and make changes to the ones that you want to allow to have your location or ones that you don't want to have your location, right? Very easy to do. But if you get a lot of apps and if you have a lot of apps like I do, then you maybe want to just start fresh. Maybe you want to audit that process over again. That is what resetting location and privacy will do. It essentially restarts those uh, those permissions and lets you go one by one as you use those apps to grant those permissions again. Um, after you've you know found which one is right for you, you follow through the process by tapping on it and going through. There's typically going to be kind of another uh, pop up that says, hey, is, are you sure this is something that you want to do? 
you say yes, and then you wait for the process to complete. Almost every one of these, actually, I think every single one of these uh, will require a reboot of the device. So just be aware of that. When you go through the reset process, it's going to reboot the device. Folks, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode of Hands on Mac. This episode, obviously not about the Mac, but instead about resetting your iPhone and every little reset option, what it means. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Hands on Mac. I will be back again next week with more tips and tricks and everything in between for your iPhones, your iPads, your Macs, and other Apple devices. Uh, until then, you can reach out to me, Micah, at twit.tv with your suggestions, your questions, everything in between as well. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.